This is my current mallet and for what I paid for it and how I've abused it, I can't really complain too much. It didn't cost very much money and it does technically function. Being a bit more critical about it, uh, it's a little bit too light. It doesn't have enough hitting power. Uh, the handle is probably the right thickness, but it isn't all that comfortable. Now I could take a rasp to it and round it over, but it's a little bit narrow here. So using some of the information I could gather from this, I made a prototype of what I want to make. This is still a prototype, so it is a little bit uh, thin in a few directions. I didn't want to cut up any usable wood and I was just gathering some scraps together. Handle is definitely too thin uh, in thickness of the wood this way, but it's much easier to grip, much more comfortable like that. You'll notice the bit of the odd shape uh, as this is styled off a hatchet rather than your traditional mallet. There's no real reason for it other than I wanted to try it. Uh, every mallet tends to look pretty similar, so I thought, well, I'll be a little bit different, see how that works out. And at this stage, this actually is really nice. Now, I'm not sure whether this will introduce some issues. This lamination of wood in the middle here is definitely thinner than on the other side on a symmetrical mallet. So that's something that uh, I may discover every time is quite a flaw in this design. We'll find out. I started by resawing down some big ash for the handle. This will make two handle blanks. For the mallet head, I'm using red gum. Rather than multiple passes with the table saw to get through such thick and hard timber, it was quicker to just resaw at the bandsaw. Then take the remainder to the jointed to clean it up, then back to the bandsaw and repeat for all three slices. Then everything could be thickness down to a consistent thickness. The handle and middle lamination needed to be the same thickness. The outer two layers were a bit thicker, but equal to each other. The handle blanks could then be ripped to width. Some spray adhesive attaches the template securely enough to cut, but not so securely that they can't be easily peeled off. The tenon was formed by using the table saw to nibble it away. The actual dimensions of the tenon don't really matter too much as the mallet head is glued and sized around it. The red gum will actually make enough for two mallet heads, so it was cut to size at the table saw. The middle lamination receives a two degree angle for wedging the handle in. Using a long scrap, I could securely hold the mallet head down without getting my fingers in the way. The mallet head was then glued up using the handle tenon to figure out the spacing. Though not shown, I kept the order of the resawn parts for some nice grain matching later on. I switched to a 6mm 4TPI blade and it makes really quick work of these curves. A larger blade can do okay too, but you'll need to make many relief cuts to get around the tight corners. So with that roughed out uh, and just friction fit together, it's actually pretty comfortable as is. I could take this straight to the sander and clean up the edges, but at this stage there's probably not a lot of point. I want a round over on the front and more of an oval shape on the back. You could take this to the router table with a round over bit and get it pretty close, but it doesn't leave as much room to custom fit it to your hand. So what I'm going to do is take it to the vise instead, use a combination of a rasp, a spoke shave, probably some sandpaper, uh, you know, sanding bow or something like that, and really refine that. 
on the mallet head however certainly can just go straight to the spindle sander to clean up that edge or that that side and then probably a block plane to knock off the sharp corners so that it's a little bit uh, less dangerous to swing around I've got a flat bottom spoke shave so it can't really get into the interior curves too well likewise the flat Shinto saw rasp can't get into those curves well either and my half round file hadn't arrived yet Two relief holes were drilled into the tenon and I used the bandsaw to cut lines down for the wedges. In hindsight I should have used about a curve and a half to make these cuts for the wedges. Then everything received glue and the wedges were hammered in. That way if the glue ever fails the wedging action should prevent the handle from falling out. So that was a really fun project. I ended up applying a couple of coats of essential tongue oil to the mallet and a coat of shellac. It looks and feels great. Chamfered all the edges on the mallet head. Uh, and I've, I've used it a few times, not a whole lot, but it is actually a lot more fun to swing than my old mallet, wherever that has gone to. Uh, I still do have another mallet to work on, experiment on uh, exact shaping for my hand and a half round rasp arrived or a wood file this is Iwasaki wood file so I'll let you know how that goes in the future um, so far so good with that if you're interested in making one of these mallets for yourself I'll have a link in the description below to some free templates that you can stick on for the two shapes there's not going to be any scale or anything like that on the templates just print it as do not scale that way it'll fit on whatever the american paper size is and a4 for most of the rest of the world a nice simple project but i've been out of the workshop for a few weeks so it was nice to sort of ease in with a nice fun project thanks for watching